are you a conscious man or woman ready to call in your person, but you've been feeling so frustrated by an endless string of dates or short-term romances that go nowhere, you've been single for a long time, or you're dissatisfied with the people that you have dated and you are ready to do something about it. If that's you, today's episode is going to help you in so many ways because I'm going to help you understand how to weed out people who are not your person quickly and with ease, what's really blocking you from connection, and how to tell if your standards are healthy versus signs of an insecure attachment style. My name is Amaya Shiva, and I'm a sex and intimacy coach who helps conscious men and women go from drained and frustrated in their intimate lives to deeply connected and having a great sex. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. I have so much content coming your way full of practical, useful information that will change your life as soon as you start using it. So make sure you hit those buttons. Now I've supported hundreds of clients from around the world. And what I can tell you is this, it's hard enough to make changes to your life with support and proper insights, but without them, it becomes nearly impossible. The fact that you're here is already putting you ahead of the game. And there are further steps I'm going to offer you at the end of this video for those of you who are serious about making changes to your life, to your dating life, to your sex life, and to how you feel in your own skin and your self-worth. So stay tuned till the end. So if you're somebody who is feeling super frustrated by an endless string of dates, you're ready to meet your person, and you're clear about your worth, you're clear what kind of relationship you desire, but for whatever reason, the cards are just not falling into place. You've tried the dating apps, you're meeting people in the wild, as we like to call it when you meet someone in person, um, and you're really starting to wonder, well, is something wrong with me? Like, is it me or is it them? And this video is going to help clarify if it is you or if it is them and why you're having that experience. First of all, I want to tell you, you are not alone. And there are some very good reasons you might be experiencing these kinds of frustrations. So let's start by introducing the attachment styles. And if you're already familiar, you can skip this part but you might want to stay tuned because you never know what insight you might get. There are four main attachment styles or tendencies that dictates their behavior in romantic relationship like dating and partnership. So we'll begin with number one, anxiously attached. And it's much like it sounds. It's people who experience some anxiety about the connection with their partner. They are people who need constant reassurance and check-ins from their partner. Uh, it might be somebody who's calling you multiple times a day, who's texting you multiple times throughout the day, or you have that desire, right? Because you really want to make sure that the connection is safe and unbroken. And I want to preface that there's nothing wrong with any of the styles and that they're simply nervous system responses. And they come from a combination of childhood experience, relationship experience, and genetics. So this isn't something you need to judge yourself for, but it is something you should become aware of because when you understand that pattern, you can create habits and communication styles that are far more effective than some of these behaviors and patterns that you'll see in the different styles, right? Coming back to anxious style, one wonderful thing about anxiously attached people is they're very empathetic. They're very caring. You know, they really want to know how you're doing. They are really tuned into you, right? Like they want to nurture you and take care. Now, the shadow side of anxiously attached people is that when things are not going well, they will engage in what is called protest behavior 
which means that instead of telling you what they need, there will be tit for tat behavior. Like for example, say you're dating an anxious person and they text you and their perception is you haven't texted back fast enough. Well, they might uh, then ignore you for some hours after you do respond as a way to get back at you or they're going to stonewall or push you away for a couple days or do other things to show they're upset instead of communicating their needs. Anxious people, your mantra is it is safe to share my needs and they can be met. This brings us to avoidantly attached people. The name is also giving us a big clue about what's going on, right? They might say they want their king or queen. And I'm going to get into this more later. As in, how can you tell if your standards are healthy versus you have an avoidant attachment style? Because on the surface, they can look the same. Stay tuned because I'm going to break that down. Avoidant people also have a pattern of dating a lot of people. They are often the ones who are endlessly single or even if they're in a relationship, they are unhappy. They're dissatisfied and they're always, you know, talking about that one that got away or their ideal and have a hard time accepting and loving the person in front of them fully. Now, the beautiful part about avoidance is they do have a lot of independence and autonomy. They want independence. If you're texting them multiple times a day, they're going to be smothered. They're going to want to retreat even further. And if you aren't noticing already, what kind of combo do you think that is when an avoidant attachment style and an anxious person get together? Oof. In my opinion, this is the root of most toxic relationships and it's something I'm going to explore in other videos. So again, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now, what's interesting about avoidance is they very rarely date each other because there's not enough glue to make the relationship stick, right? If you have two people who are both trying to keep their space and independence, it's going to be hard for them to come together. Avoidance also tend to uh, idealize romantic relationships or a partner as they need to be like this, but, but they often don't understand what it takes, uh, the compromise, the giving, the nurturance that is required for long-term relationships. So if that's you, don't feel bad. And notice that part of you is probably behaving in ways that are opposite to your deep desire, which in my opinion is connection because it's wired into us. We were born craving and needing other human beings to survive and that doesn't change as we age. Number three is the securely attached person. This is somebody who feels very confident and comfortable in relationship. They're not overly concerned about the other person and what they're doing. They know that they're worthy of love and they are also very good at helping soothe their partner. They don't, th they don't take things too personally um, and they are in it for the long run. So the truth is if you are securely attached, you're less likely to be single. And that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this video, why you are not running into more secure people and what you can do to increase your chances of actually finding and connecting with a securely attached partner, which is 100% the best one for all styles to connect with. And lastly, we have what's called anxious avoidant or some people call it disorganized, but I don't prefer that. I think it's a little bit judgy of a label. So um, maybe you think anxious and avoidant is judgy, well, up to you. Anxious avoidance have a combination of both anxiety and avoidant tendency. And that could look like this. Say you start dating someone and you're super, super excited about them and you just, you wanna go all in after one date, you're like, yeah, come with me here, come with me there. Let's plan out our next month together. And then when they don't immediately respond with the same enthusiasm as you, you just cut them off. You just quit talking to them. You just blow them off, treat them like shit, 
or just start dating other people, not even telling them, right? That's a classic kind of anxious avoidant move. These responses come from experiences in our lives that trigger the nervous system into believing connection is unsafe. And so on some level, you might sabotage it, especially for the avoidance and anxious avoidant types. But don't worry, it's not a life sentence. You can heal from it. I work with so many clients from around the world on this exact topic, and I've gone through that journey myself, and I know there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's get back to our topic for today, which is if you're someone who's trying to call in your king or queen, but you're not finding them, you're feeling frustrated, you're wondering, is it me or is it them? Well, this is going to help you. I'm a part of the Austin Conscious community. And there are a lot of wonderful people here who are actively working on themselves to break old patterns, to break generational traumas and conditions and patterning, and to see and experience the world in a new way. And you know you have shit to deal with because you're human, just like all of us do. So I've noticed that in the conscious community, there can be this fantasy, right? Like, I'm not going to have any conflict with my perfect person or I'm going to know immediately when I find my person. And I disagree with these statements because I think they're really limiting. I'll share that in my own experience, when I met my longest term partner, my husband, my ex, my now ex-husband of 10 years, I didn't know when I first met him, that he would be such a catalyst for healthy partnership in my life. And we did have conflict like all the time. So I want to invite you into the mindset that soulmates can be created. And if you can find somebody who aligns with your value systems and is willing to challenge you in a loving way, and you're willing to show up the same way for them, that's a pretty dang good start. There's also an addiction to the perfect story. How can you tell if your standards are healthy and aligning with your higher values and your worth versus an avoidant strategy and a fantasy that's not actually going to get you connected? Well, here are a few ways to understand. Number one, if your standards are healthy and truly aligned, what's going to happen when you meet people that aren't in alignment, you won't second guess it, but you're not going to get mad about it, right? You're just going to say, oh, well, that's not for me. And you'll move on. Secondly, the way you think about potential partners will be positive, right? You'll think that they're great people. You'll see the good in them. You'll see their worth and their value, right? And third, like when you do date someone, you're going to feel good with them instead of constantly second guessing your choice, right? So enjoying your partner, enjoying your partnership, being able to navigate conflict in a healthy way versus if it's actually an avoidant attachment style disguised as I'm conscious, disguised as I'm looking for the perfect person. What you'll notice is that you're not going to think anybody's good enough. You're going to go on a hundred dates. None of them will check your boxes. You'll feel dissatisfied. And the way you talk about them, both to yourself and other people, is going to focus on the negatives, the reasons it can't and won't work. So this is a really important distinction when you want to understand, is it me or is it them? Now, I want to talk a little bit about statistics, right? Statistically speaking, if you are dating, you are more likely to come across an avoidantly attached person, right? As I mentioned earlier, because there are more of them in the dating pool. And that's because they don't have the tools to make things stick, or maybe they don't have the desire. And that can be for a number of reasons, but ultimately they're not dating people long term. And that's why you see the same people on dating apps and the same people who are single for years on end, right? So that's something else to understand because the secure people go fast. 
Now, how can you get yourself a securely attached person? They are out there and don't think that they're not. And, and something to remember when you are dating, especially if you're anxiously attached, is that there are more people for you, right? Something I used to experience when I was in my early 20s and dating before I got married at 25 was that I would feel scarcity. Like if something didn't work with somebody, I would be like my, my attachment system would get activated and it would feel like I was never going to meet someone again. And I learned to retrain that through the work that I do and have been doing for the last years. Uh, and it's something that you can do as well. But really, if you are anxiously attached, it's so important that you have a pool of people to choose from, right? A pool, a dating pool, like not just one person uh, until you find that person who meets that securely attached criteria. And it is possible. And how do you get there? Well, first, you're going to have to say no a lot more. And you're going to have to let go of potential for what's actually showing up in your space. And it's going to take a little bit of work and recognizing when your anxious system gets activated, you might be mistaking it, this, this stress in your body for love and attraction, but it actually isn't. And when you find a secure person, you might notice that you feel bored because all of a sudden, for the first time, you're safe. So if it's not the explosive fireworks, that's okay. Don't let that stop you and really take the time to get to know someone. I can tell you that 90% of the people who I've had amazing sex with and who were great partners were ones that I knew well before there was any romantic connection. This is in contrast with avoidant attachment style, who again, on the surface can say things that look very similar to securely attached desires or anxious attached even, but inside you, you really get scared about deeper intimacy and deeper connection. And it's something that causes a cortisol reaction in your nervous system, right? You're going to feel stressed you avoid deeper intimacy. You don't want to hold hands. You don't want to kiss that much. You might focus on genitals or getting off and then getting out, right? You're going to have sex and leave. And I got to work in the morning. I can't stay or you can't stay. Um, and you're, you're quick to judge the people that you're dating. Like it feels like they are going to impinge on your life when you think about getting closer with them, right? This is a real sign of avoidant attachment. If this is you, don't despair because you can work towards secure attachment. And what it takes is really powerful communication and being with people who are willing to work with you, right? Now, for me, I cannot date avoidant people. My anxious attachment system gets way too activated and it's too stressful. And that doesn't mean that avoidant people cannot have healthy relationships. It just means that they're going to have to let go of some of these walls and distancing or deactivating strategies that they've been using to keep themselves safe from true intimacy, which is something you're actually probably scared of, right? You can learn how to work towards secure attachment and I can help you do that. So be sure to stay tuned for my attachment series and for all the different content I offer that's all about unlocking your true desires, creating deep intimacy, and having amazing sex as a result. So if you want those things, make sure you stay in my community. And if you are ready for support, if you are committed to creating pleasure, closeness, and partnership because you are worthy and you do have healthy standards or you want to learn how to create them instead of holding yourself back from the love that you actually desire, please book a discovery call with me by clicking on the link below in the comments. But again, only for those people who are truly committed to this work. My name is Amaya Shiva. Thank you so much for joining. And I'd love to hear in the comments what is landing for you. Sending all my love. And until next time.